Number 15. Possessed Woman Not long ago, a video went viral of a man acting strangely in a convenience store. As he fell to the ground and tugged at his shirt, he seemed possessed. It turns out this wasn't the first video of its kind. A similar video featuring a woman was released in June 2016. The CCTV footage shows a woman casually shopping down the aisles of what seems to be a clothing store. She approached a few items on the shelves before dropping everything and shaking uncontrollably. She seems to be exhibiting the behaviors of someone having a seizure, but she's also screaming and making very deep growls. <laughs> A man approaches her to see if she's okay as others watch in disbelief. She screams loudly and throws her head back and startles everyone. The man helping her even falls down. Her behavior gets worse as she continues to scream and convulse. Eventually, the group of people calm her down enough to pick her up and walk off camera. Number 14. Brian Schaefer It is not uncommon for college students to visit bars. Most students get together on weekends or after classes to have a few drinks and unwind or even discuss school. However, it is very uncommon for a student to disappear in a bar. The story of Brian Schaefer starts out as your everyday college student's visit to a bar and turns into something out of a sci-fi murder mystery. Schaefer planned a spring break getaway with his longtime girlfriend Alexis Wagner. He had purchased a hotel room in Miami and his friends claimed he planned to propose. However, about three days before the couple were set to head out on their romantic vacation, Brian vanished. He and his friends went to a live music bar called The Ugly Tuna. They had several drinks and shots. Two of his friends went to the bathroom and when they returned, Brian was gone. They asked around but no one had valid information. His friends assumed he just left early and no one noticed so they also left. When investigators were alerted because family and friends had still yet to hear from Brian, they found out he had not left the bar. He was seen entering the bar with friends on camera, and he was seen standing outside the entrance before going back in and never being seen again. They stepped on the escalator with Brian in front. As they went up the escalator, Brian turned to look back at Meredith and Clint and they were laughing and joking and obviously having a good time. This is the area where Brian was last seen. To my right, he was seen on camera speaking with two young ladies that he'd met inside the bar. After speaking with the young ladies, he turned and walked back into the bar, at which time we lost him on camera. No cameras found Brian exiting the bar or the complex which the bar was located inside. There are, of course, other explanations for him not being seen on camera but he was never seen again and some claim that even if he escaped the cameras at the complex, he would have been caught on nearby street and parking lot cameras at least. Brian Schaefer was never heard from or seen again. His family has faith that he will return home someday, as there was never a body or signs of struggle discovered. However, there has been very little evidence found since his disappearance in 2006. Number 13. Jennifer Kesey this young 24-year-old woman went missing in January of 2006. She was last seen the night before her disappearance, leaving her place of employment. Before vanishing, she had made casual phone calls to family and friends as she had just returned home from a vacation. Her last phone call was to her boyfriend around 10 p.m. According to him, she seemed normal and not in any danger. The next morning, she failed to arrive to work or answer her phone for several hours. Her manager called her parents to alert them that they had not heard from her. Jennifer's parents immediately drove two hours to Jennifer's condo to find that she had been home that morning, but there were no sign of forced entry or struggle. Jennifer's family spent the day searching for their daughter and looking for any evidence of a struggle. Investigators got involved and two days later an unidentified person was seen by an apartment surveillance system, parking Jennifer's car and leaving it. The car was picked up by local police and sent to a crime lab. 
The person seen leaving the car became the strongest lead in the case, which isn't good news considering his face can't be seen on the footage. The CCTV camera that caught him up close was the type that takes snapshots every few seconds, rather than recording video footage. In every single frame, his face is hidden by a bar or fencing. This piece of evidence does, however, confirm that foul play was involved in her disappearance. Numerous valuables left in Jennifer's car led investigators to believe that robbery was not the motive of this crime. A search dog tracked a scent from Jennifer's car back to her condo, which makes it seem like either she or the suspect returned to the condo after the car was dropped off. The FBI and NASA assisted in the investigation by enhancing the images and identifying possible details about the person's identity. The only useful facts determined were that the suspect was a young male about 5 foot 3. Jennifer's condo had been undergoing renovations which led construction workers to be on site nearly 24-7. She had complained to family that the workers would harass and catcall her, but further investigation of the construction workers turned up no new evidence, and none of the men seemed to match the body type of the person who dropped the car. More importantly, these men were illegal immigrants and if one had quit work between the time of her disappearance and the time of the investigation, there would be little to no way of tracking them down. Jennifer has been missing with no new evidence in her case for over 10 years now. Journalists that have reviewed the CCTV footage name this man the luckiest person of interest ever. Number 12. Goblin while the creature in the CCTV footage has been called a goblin or gnome, it's not certain what we're seeing. This outside surveillance camera caught the small creature walking up and walking off camera to not return. It seems to walk on two legs like a human, but has very jagged movements as if it's hurt. There also appears to be what could be a mane, or for paranormal enthusiasts, maybe some sort of clothing. The creature does have a tail that looks like it matches the mane-like region though. Some viewers have even claimed that they see small horns on top of the creature. Regardless of what you believe this is, it's unlike most animals we've seen, especially in residential areas. Number 11. Stairway Ghost This footage shows a woman who appears to be walking down a stairwell of some building. As she walks casually downward, she stops in her tracks and seems to fall against the wall in fear. She quickly turns around and runs back up the stairs out of the camera's view. When reviewing the video, you can see the door at the bottom of the stairs seems to fling open and a dark shadowy apparition comes through the doorway. The dark ghostly figure seems to be masculine and it runs towards the woman but vanishes midway up the stairs. Number 10. Woman Attacked by Ghost This footage allegedly comes from the reception hall of a haunted hotel, although the exact name or location of the hotel is not published. The woman seated in the room seems to be waiting for someone as she's just hanging out and fiddling with her cell phone. As the woman sits in silence, a chair behind her moves slightly and startles her. She looks behind her, probably expecting to see a person. When she realizes that there's no one in the room, she returns to messing with her phone, although she does seem on edge. The chair moves again, scaring her to the point that she literally sits at the edge of her seat and makes a phone call. Uncertain who she's calling, Maybe just someone to distract her from the tension in the room. While on the phone, the chair to the left of her lunges forward and she jumps out of her seat and falls down a few feet away. She stands up and tries to run out of the room but a table is thrown which trips her and she is then attacked by the poltergeist. Her hair is pulled again and she is thrown across the room before tripping again and hitting her head on the tile flooring. She appears to be unconscious as a few pieces of furniture continue to move by themselves in the room. Without knowing the exact location of this, we can't know if this was a common occurrence and while the original video claims that this woman died from a head injury, there's no proof and she could have likely walked away from this with nothing more than emotional scarring. Number 9. Beijing Tiger Attack This video comes from a security camera on the grounds of Beijing's Beidoling Wildlife Park. In mid-July, a husband, his wife, and her mother were driving through the park on a day out. 
Things took a dark turn when the husband and wife got into an argument and the wife exited the vehicle to get away from the situation. She came around to the driver's side, possibly to speak with her husband more, and mere seconds later a large tiger grabs her by the legs and drags her away. Her husband immediately chases after them. The woman's mother also exits the vehicle and a wildlife jeep can be seen driving up, probably to help in this tragedy. The woman's mother was mauled by the tiger and died on the scene, and she was badly injured and rushed to a local hospital. The park commented that they do allow visitors to drive their own cars through the park, but they are absolutely prohibited from exiting their vehicles. While this story is tragic and terrifying, it serves as a good reminder to follow the rules when it comes to wildlife. Number 8. Elevator Ghost this terrifying video was posted in 2009 and is timestamped from 2008. It's not certain where this video is from, but it's clearly CCTV footage from the elevators, halls, and stairwells of some kind of office building. In the bottom right corner, we see the surveillance from inside an elevator. Two office employees are just casually chatting as they ride to their destination. Everything seems normal until the doors open and the two men go to exit. As the man on the left who had been leaning against the wall lifts up and walks out, a figure seems to appear out of nowhere. There was nowhere this figure could have been hiding or standing as the man was clearly touching the wall while leaning against it. The apparition resembles an elderly, decrypt man or woman who moves slowly towards the door. It even appears to walk outward, although it isn't certain. The ghost never looks up towards the camera and is never seen on the other screens. Number 7. Child Held Hostage This Walmart surveillance camera caught a very terrifying hostage situation which ended with gunshots. In June 2013, Sammy Wallace was seen on the surveillance system walking into the Midwest City, Oklahoma local Walmart. He grabbed a shopping cart and walked around aimlessly while talking on the phone. Wallace passed Alicia Keating and her two daughters several times before he came back around and snatched her younger two-year-old daughter out of the shopping cart. He handed a phone to Alicia and told her to call a police officer in Dallas. Alicia was distraught though and just began screaming for Wallace to give her daughter back. That was when he pulled a large knife out of his pants and put it to the girl's stomach. Employees approached the situation and witnesses called 911. As the Walmart was located directly across the street from the police department, officers were on the scene within literal seconds. Chief Klaibs said that the police negotiated with Wallace for nearly two hours, trying to get him to release the toddler. Officers eventually contacted the police officer in Dallas, Texas that Wallace had been trying to contact. The officer claimed that Wallace had been harassing him but for what was never explained. Towards the end of the tense situation, Klaibs convinced Wallace to have a seat. The toddler began to fuss as she had been calm throughout most of the standoff. As she began to squirm, Wallace squeezed her and moved the knife from her stomach to her neck. Claves claimed that Wallace then began to say things about a satanic cult and started to count down from 60. Nearby Captain Huff was certain that Wallace was counting down to kill the toddler or that he had already injured her by squeezing her or making contact with her neck and the blade. Huff shot Wallace in the head and he died instantly. Wallace then moves the knife up to the girl's neck, and while another officer out of view distracts him, Huff lunges forward, shooting and killing Wallace. He made sure he was at point blank range so that there was no ability to harm that child. And, and of course, there's always that chance. After the situation, Wallace's family claimed that he had been in prison for 11 years and just moved to Oklahoma because he allegedly saw things in his old apartment. He had a history of mental illness and was apparently not seeking proper care. The most terrifying part of this footage is considering having your child or sibling grabbed up in Walmart. There was no method to Wallace choosing this child. She was just a child, which he knew is what he needed. Something like this is sure to make you hold your children a little closer. Number 6. Creepy Intruder 
In June 2015, a mother of two set up a CCTV camera above her back door. For several days, she had found scratches around the doorknob and hinge of the door. What she originally thought was some type of animal ended up being something every mother fears. One morning, she awoke to find that her back gate had been left open and a blade of some sort had been fashioned into a hook and used near the door lock. She reviewed the CCTV footage to find a terrifying man covering his face with a hoodie and carrying a torch. He shined the torch into the kitchen window to assure no one was awake and then proceeded to try and pry the door open. As if seeing something like this isn't scary enough, realizing that it's been going on for days is probably a much worse feeling. Lisa, the mother involved, explained that as she watched the footage she shook uncontrollably. Her children were asleep upstairs and the thought of someone breaking in for what little she had terrified her. After the incident, police patrolled the neighborhood in hopes of finding the potential robber but further information on the case was never released. Number 5. Children Kidnapped in Pakistan The CCTV footage comes from Lahore, Pakistan and while the footage shown is disturbing, the story behind this ongoing tragedy makes it 10 times worse. In the region of Punjab in India, from 2011 to 2016 over 7,000 children were abducted. This trend of abductions has spread throughout India and now has moved into Pakistan with over 300 abductions in only the last month. It is understood that they are forced into drug use, drug sales, prostitution, begging, and worst of all, some are found dead with organs such as kidneys, hearts, and eyes missing. A large majority of these children are also brainwashed into becoming suicide bombers for forces in Pakistan. Many complain that the Pakistani police and dolphin forces are not helping to curb the high rates of crime and are also little to no help in these kidnapping cases. The kidnappers either do this by choice or by hire. They drive large white vans where they snatch up multiple children in a single day. They also began wearing burqas in public to hide better and communicate with drivers. This footage of children being grabbed from right beside their parents is truly chilling, but the fact these parents know the horrible fate their children face once they're grabbed up makes this a pure nightmare. Again, seeing something like this will make you keep a much tighter grip on your children. Just the thought of how easily things like this can happen is enough to affect anyone with kids. Number 4. Lars Matank In July of 2014, 28-year-old Lars Matank went on vacation with friends to Golden Sands in Bulgaria, a popular spot for German and English youth. While drinking and hanging out on the beach, Lars got into a dispute which escalated to a physical fight. This fight damaged his eardrum which meant that he was not able to take a flight home with his friends and had to wait an extra night alone. While staying at a local hotel, Lars made calls to his mother claiming that he believed someone or something was after him. He seemed scared, disorientated, and would end every phone call by just abruptly hanging up. He apparently told her that four men had been following him and asking about his medication a 500 mg antibiotic, and that he was currently hiding outside of the hotel. Lars did visit the doctor the next day to get a checkup before taking his flight home. Apparently though, he abruptly ran out of the doctor's office. The CCTV footage from the airport is the last time Lars was seen before disappearing into a nearby forest. He seems normal until he enters a corridor. He then drops all of his belongings and bolts out of the airport. He can be seen on outside security footage running off camera. Witnesses say they saw Lars jump a large chain link fence and run into the forest. He was never seen or heard from again. He may have gotten lost in the woods, although search parties have found no evidence inside the wooded area. While Lars had no history of mental illness, it is possible that the injury he suffered could have been more severe than the doctors originally diagnosed. Severe head injury can lead to psychosis, which seems to be what has likely happened here. There are of course more explanations such as Lars abusing more recreational drugs. A huge symptom of injury induced psychosis though is paranoia which Lars demonstrated completely. There are several search parties and people that you can contact if you're interested in learning more or helping with the disappearance of Lars Matank. Number 3. John P. Wheeler 
This 66-year-old man was known for holding many prestigious places in government systems. Some of his titles throughout his lifetime include Chairman of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund, Senior Planner of Amtrak, Chief Executive and CEO of Mothers Against Drunk Driving, Consultant to the Mateer Corporation, and a presidential aide to Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush, and George W. Bush administrations. He was, of course, more well known for his positions in the presidential administrations. His death was a mysterious and dark tale that had many missing pieces which kept the public guessing. Those who kept up with the news of his death in December 2010 admit they still look for new evidence to pop up from time to time. While his cause of death was deemed a homicide by assault with blunt force trauma, there's still plenty of questions surrounding the case that have yet to be answered. As the story goes, Wheeler was seen the night before his death. He was wandering around a parking garage looking for his car or a place to stay warm. This disturbing CCTV footage shows Wheeler before his death. He's clearly acting bizarre, having trouble walking and speaking. He seems drunk or under the influence, but those who came across him that day claimed he seemed more disorientated and lost than drunk or high. Psychiatrists have claimed that behavior like this can be caused by heart problems, extreme stress or fear, but that it didn't seem likely for Wheeler to have these issues out of nowhere as he had no history of health relations psychosis. As Wheeler walks down a corridor in the building, he touches many things, looks around him several times, closes a door, raises his hands into the air, and appears to be talking to himself. These are all general signs of paranoia and a lack of contact with reality. On December 31st, his body was discovered falling onto a trash heap in the Cherry Island landfill. It's uncertain where he had been picked up, but it was likely from a commercial dumpster, as there were several such stops on the truck's route. The medical examiner said that his official cause of death was blunt force trauma, but a weapon or exact cause was never determined. There are various theories to this, and those that have an interest in government conspiracy theories believe that in the footage, Wheeler had been drugged for whatever reason and then killed to keep government secrets hidden. There were no drugs found in Wheeler's system, however they could have been cleansed from his system before he died. No matter what you believe, this story is shocking and the fact these empty spaces will probably never be filled is frustrating and unsettling. Number 2. Nicholas White Any viewers with claustrophobia are sure to get a panic out of this one. The CCTV footage was collected from the McGraw Hill building in New York City. Around 11 o'clock on a Friday night in early October 1999, Nicholas White left his office to take a quick smoke break before packing up and heading home. White returned to the elevator to head back up to the 43rd floor. The elevator took off quickly, but after merely a few seconds it stopped abruptly. The lights went out before flickering back on. No buttons or emergency calls in the elevator would respond and White soon realized he was trapped. White rang the alarm bell several times and even broke the button so it ran continuously, but apparently it was never heard. After hours of sitting calmly, he began to pry open the elevator doors but was faced with a cement wall that said 13, meaning he was on the 13th floor where the elevator had no stops, as it was an express elevator for the 39th floor and up. He smoked a cigarette in hopes the workers would smell the smoke, but nothing seemed to work. It was a Friday night and no one would be back until Monday or so. Nicholas tried everything. He jumped towards the escape hatch but found it was locked. He lit matches. He even urinated down the elevator shaft in hopes the scent or liquid would alert someone or something. He mostly slept and went through his wallet. He was finally released Monday morning after 41 hours of agonizing boredom. As soon as the doors opened, he bolted out and explained what had happened. While his calmness is admirable, it's safe to say that most people would not have handled this situation as well. 41 hours of isolation could easily lead a person towards insanity, and no food or water for that long is plenty enough to cause illness or dehydration. Number 1. Chip Chan This story has been shared several times throughout the years, and it never becomes any less disturbing. Considering that this is still an ongoing viral internet sensation is even more unsettling. Chip Chan is a woman who broadcasts herself live from her home via CCTV cameras and webcams. The first person to discover her thought she was dead, as she lay perfectly still in an uncomfortable position for hours. He took the story to 4chan to get help in deciding if she was really dead and if so, how she died. 
Tons of users flocked to her broadcast and began putting clues of her death together before she rose up to life and hid behind signs she had made. Through years of broadcast, Tumblr posts, and her signs, her addicted viewers have learned a few things about her. She lives in South Korea. When she does leave her home, which is rarely, she wears a disguise. She sleeps up to 12 or more hours a day, usually inside a filing cabinet. And while she spends most of her waking hours on the internet, she seems to be suffering from depression as she rarely smiles and often cries. According to her signs, she claimed that she had been held against her will for 16 years by someone she calls P. She claims that P is a corrupt officer that has planted a chip in her ankle which tracks her and her health. Occasionally, Chip Chan's cameras will go off for up to several hours, which is apparently when P comes to visit according to her blog, linked below. Some of her signs read, don't get tricked, don't get fooled, early every morning. If someone comes that paralyzes the person, I can't be stopped. The stalker used this skill from 2006. I have slept for 20 hours every day since then. I do not know what happened while I sleep. I have been always afraid of sleeping. These are of course rough translations. When she leaves her home, she has a setup of boxes that cover her doorway as she exits. When she sleeps, her lights will flicker on and off by themselves as if controlled by an outside source. A huge plot hole with Chip Chan's story is that she disables the cameras when P arrives and won't release his name or officer rank even though she clearly wants to be helped. When emailing Chip Chan, an auto-response of photos of police officers is sent. Most of the photos are blurry and seem to have been taken by Chip Chan. When local authorities were contacted regarding Chip Chan, they said she is a mentally ill woman who would often protest against police forces and China Central Television. It's very likely that this woman is just suffering from a severe form of paranoid schizophrenia, but there are plenty of viewers that believe her story and are committed to helping her. It's uncertain what the creepiest part of this is. Is it Chip Chan, the mentally ill or possibly kidnapped woman? Or is it the millions of viewers obsessed with watching her doing nothing but sleep and cry? Thanks for checking out this countdown. Be sure to subscribe as we upload new videos every week. It'd really mean a lot if you join the notification squad by clicking this gear button, checking this box, and then clicking save. See ya.